So in JavaScript, you may have come across the term truthy and falsy before, or you may have come across something like this, this if else statement and been a little confused. So user input is being passed into the parentheses in the if statement, but shouldn't that be some sort of comparison here, such as type of user input and then equals string. Uh, we're just putting in a value here and it's not obvious what that means in this context. It's not a comparison. Now the reason this works relates to the existence of truthy and falsy values in JavaScript. A truthy value is any value that when it is coerced into being true or false converts to true and a falsy value is any value that converts to false when it is coerced to do so. You can run this check yourself on any value you like by calling the inbuilt boolean function and just passing something in there and then logging the result to the console. So if I type a number one in there, save it and go over to the browser, you'll see that that is returning the value true. Now, all of these values here that I've listed are falsy in JavaScript. So the number zero, numeric zero, also zero in the big int type. So this is used for large integers. Uh, null, so the value null. The absence of a value, undefined. False itself, the Boolean value, not a number and also an empty string. And it doesn't matter whether that's with double quotation marks or single quotation marks, it's falsy both ways. Now, the reason I started with falsy values is because then it's very easy to explain truthy because all other values are truthy. So just to demonstrate, if I pass in any one of these values into the Boolean function and check what it's returning, it's going to return false. So I'll just pass in a few of those for demonstration purposes. I'm passing in null, an empty string and zero. And the first console logs that we see in the browser now should be false. So there you see three times false. And now if I pass in any other value into these, so I'll pass in a comment. So just a string with some content in and let's also pass in true there. So the Boolean value true, and these evaluate all to true. Now this is fine as a theoretical exercise so far, but why is this important? When are values coerced to true or false in practice? Well, we are talking about conditional statements using either if else or the ternary operator. So in an if else statement, Whatever is passed into the parentheses here in the if statement is evaluated and is coerced to be either true or false. And this is practically useful if we want to execute the if statement if the value is truthy and the else value if it is falsy. So we have some user input here. We don't know what the value will be in practice because it is determined by the user. We may want to execute the if statement if the user has entered something and falsely if they haven't. So the first if statement in practice might be some sort of processing of the user input, send it to a backend database and the else statement might be throwing an error, but I'm just using console log here. And this is the reason why user input at the moment triggers the if statement, because at the moment it's a comment and we know that a string with some content is going to evaluate truthy. But if I change that to an empty string, so say the user hasn't input anything, you'll see that this is going to return the else statement, user has not input a value. So this is the main and quite convenient use for truthy and falsy. You can just pass in a value to the if statement and it will evaluate it to true or false. The application here is often that falsy represents 
So if it's any of these values up here, this represents an absence of value and a truthy value represents some value that exists. But do you spot a problem here? If a user enters zero, so I'll just show you that, that is a falsy value, so that is going to execute the else statement. As you can see, user has not input a value. In some contexts, this could be valid input, like if you're asking the user, how many times on average a week do you do something, and the user enters zero, that is a valid answer. So you need to be careful when using truthy or falsy in conditionals. So if you are looking to avoid such ambiguity and implement a stricter measure of the absence of value, my advice would be to check whether the condition is null or undefined, whether the value passed in is null or undefined. And you can do that using the following syntax. So if user input does not equal undefined and user input, I'll just copy this, does not equal null. So this solution is nice and explicit and I would advise using the strict equality operator here to avoid any unexpected errors. So if there is an absence of value, user input has to equal the value and type undefined and also the value and type null. Now the ternary operator also coerces the left side statement to be true or false. So I'm going to rewrite the original if else statement we had here using the ternary operator. So this is the condition. And then if this equ equates to truthy, then it logs user has input a value to the console. If it equates to falsy, then it runs this second expression. So I'll comment out our if else statement because we're working with the ternary operator now. And if I run this, this should log user has not input a value to the console because it's an empty string. And if it's zero, it should be the same. And if I input one, then it's executing the first expression. So this is working in the same way as the original if else statement, it's relying on whether user input is truthy or falsy to determine whether to run the first statement, which originally was the if statement, or the second expression, which is in the if else, the else condition. Now, if you want to implement the stricter definition of the absence of value with the ternary operator, my advice would be to wrap the condition in parentheses because when it becomes a complex condition like this you can run into problems if you don't do that now it's a self-contained statement and it's going to work in the same way so this empty string here this is going to return the first expression because even though it's falsy we're now checking for uh, the absence of value in a strict way so only undefined the value undefined and null are going to trigger the second expression. So that is it for this tutorial on truthy and falsy. Remember to always think about what you want to achieve before deciding whether to rely upon truthy and falsy alone or use the strict test of no value suggested here. There's no right or wrong answer. It all depends on what you want to achieve and what is acceptable in your context.